Yo, what is up my Nakama? So my name is Daniel and I'm a current third year medical student. And in this video, I'm gonna share my five tips for how to study 12 plus hours a day in medical school. So let's go. Now, before I get into my five tips, I just wanna give a quick disclaimer that I think doing anything, even if it's something you love for 12 plus hours a day, is not sustainable in the long run. So for me, when I was studying 12 plus hours a day in medical school, it was in preparation for USMLE step one, and it was during my dedicated period where my school gave me a chunk of time completely free in order to study for this exam. So I had the time to study 12 plus hours a day. I think that if you study for 12 plus hours a day for a really long period of time, the material is gonna become kind of mind numbing and you're gonna lose motivation fast. So I only recommend studying this type of way for a short period of time. So for me, it was during my USMLE step one dedicated period. For you, it could be in preparation for your college exams or the MCAT, or also if you're taking step one. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know that this is not my typical study method or study schedule, but I did maintain this type of intense studying during my dedicated period. Um, so now I'm gonna get into the five tips that I wanted to share with you in order to be able to sustain this type of studying um, for whatever you're gonna do. So the first thing that I recommend is to isolate four study blocks throughout the day. So for me, I had my morning study block, my midday study block, and my evening study block. So my first study block was from eight to 12. My next one was from one to five, and my last one was from eight to 11. Now, this last one, it was only three hours because I wanted to give myself one hour of time to go to bed. So technically I was only studying 11 hours a day, but 12 hours is an even number and it makes for a nice title for the video. So with this schedule, I can still get in exercise and seven plus hours of sleep. Now, the other thing I recommend is not to plan your study schedule minute by minute, but rather plan week by week based off of the previous performance of your most recent exam. So for example, when I took my first practice exam for the step one period, I realized that my week subjects were GI anatomy and heme lymph physiology and, path and pathology. So I focused on those subjects during my first week of dedicated. And then after my second exam, I noticed I had other week areas. And so those are the areas that I targeted in the following weeks. And this way, uh, it kind of relieves some pressure of creating like a minute by minute schedule during your dedicated period. And it allows you to kind of adapt as you continue. Um, but as long as you isolate those four hour blocks of study time, you know that you're gonna be studying during those periods but each week you can change exactly what you're going to be studying. Now, my second tip is pretty self-explanatory, but it is to maintain a normal sleep and exercise regimen. And I wouldn't recommend sacrificing sleep or exercise in terms of studying more. By starting the morning refreshed with a good night's rest of sleep, the rest of your study day will be a lot more manageable. Now, the best tip that I can give with regards to exercise is to actually have a very detailed plan of what you're gonna do for the next five or six weeks and this is in contrast with what I said earlier about not having like a minute by minute plan when studying because with exercise, like if you're about to start a workout or go to the gym, if you know exactly what you're going to do, you're not going to waste time kind of fooling around or deciding what exercises to do. So having a plan in regards to your workout routine can save a lot of time and make you more efficient so that you will have more time to study at the end of the day. And if you have to, I mean, if your workouts are usually two hours and if you can cut them down to an hour, an hour and a half, that might be better. Um, I didn't necessarily sacrifice my workout time during step one, but I tried to make my workouts more efficient or I tried to do my entire routine a lot faster, which made my routine harder, except I would finish in a shorter period of time. But at the end of the day, it still ended up working out um, and I didn't try to do anything crazy in terms of my exercise routine during my step one dedicated period. I basically just tried to maintain my current strength levels. Okay, so moving on to my third tip, and that is to focus on either practice questions, active recall, or your most difficult concepts during your first study block of the day. So during your first morning session. And the reason I recommend this is because physiologically, your cortisol levels are highest in the morning. So after you've had a nice cup of coffee and you've given yourself about an hour of time to wake up, once you hit that first set of practice questions, that is when you're gonna be most concentrated and most focused on the task at hand. So this is why I recommend doing your most important or your most valuable studying during the morning and then pushing off more of your passive recall or review-like material towards the end of the study day. 
So for example, for me, what I would do is I would do two blocks of UWorld questions in the morning. And this took about two hours because I would do one block and then one hour of review. And then I would do my second block with my second review, uh, taking a total of four hours. And for me, I wanted to do my UWorld questions first thing in the morning because this most simulated the step one exam. And I would do, well, I started off not with 40 completely random questions, but as I progressed towards the end of my dedicated period, I would do 40 random timed questions. Um, and this is when I needed to focus the most because each question could cover a completely different subject in medicine. So I needed to be like a tip top mental performance in order to answer these questions correctly. Now for the second half of the day, like during my last two study blocks, I would basically do Anki, review first aid or watch uh, videos related to pathology that I still didn't have a good grasp on. Um, or read some texts or watch some YouTube videos about those concepts. And for me, this worked well overall because I wanted to take into account mental fatigue throughout the day because there's no way that for 12 hours straight you can maintain the same type of intensity of studying. Um, so during the later part of the day, I basically kind of eased my studying in a sense um, by just doing sort of passive review or reading up on material. Um, instead of like actually focusing really hard and answering practice questions. And also this was a great way to actually simulate what my exam was gonna be like because I was gonna take the exam in the morning anyways. So if you're doing questions like at 2 a.m. Um, that might not necessarily translate to how you're gonna do on the actual exam day. So I tried to mimic my test day environments by doing practice questions in the morning as well. Okay, so my fourth tip and maybe one of the most important tips for being able to study 12 plus hours a day um, during med school is to create barriers towards distractions. So for me, this was actually one of the hardest tips to implement. And I know there's a ton of videos out there talking about how um, you can leave your phone at home or put it on silence or doing the Pomodoro studying method where you study for 45 minutes straight and then 15 minutes off. Um, and I won't really repeat those tips because you probably know those or have watched those in another video, but I wanted to let you know my approach to implementing this tip. So for me, during my preclinical years, there were definitely times where um, I was not as focused as I should have been while studying. I would scroll through my newsfeed or watch YouTube videos. So what I did kind of a month going into Dedicated was I gradually implemented um, all of these tips. I kind of trained myself to be able to study for a very long period throughout the day. It wasn't just like one day during Dedicated, I flipped the switch and suddenly I was studying 12 hours a day. Going into Dedicated, I gradually implemented all of this advice. So some of the things I did in order to implement these tips was when I would go into the hospital to study for my first four hour block, I would leave my phone at home, for example. And another thing I did was I used to study in 25 minute on, five minute off Pomodoro intervals, uh, but I gradually increased that to 45 minutes on and then 15 minutes off. And then sometimes I would just do four hours of straight studying and I would enter into a kind of like flow productivity type state where I didn't have to take any breaks. I would just go four hours completely on doing all my U world questions and all my reviews. Um, and then my one hour lunch break was like my big break that I took. I think if you approach um, this mentality as like a skill that you can train, um, then that can be a useful way of thinking about it. And it's not something that you have to just do completely right the next day. You can kind of gradually build up to it, um, implement kind of tiny changes in your life that create these barriers to distractions um, in preparation for an exam or large periods of studying that you're gonna be doing in the future. Okay, so my fifth and final tip is to build in rest days during your study period. So for me, although I'm a huge proponent of Pomodoro studying, where you study for 45 minutes on and 15 minutes off, a few 15 minute intervals throughout the day isn't really gonna cut it in the long run because fatigue and burnout are eventually gonna catch up to you. So I think it's important that you need to have complete days off from studying. And it's kind of similar to working out. You know, you need to build rest days um, or else you won't have enough time to recover before your next workout. So if you treat your studying in the same manner where you take a complete day off and then you know hit the ground running again the next day, you're gonna come back stronger. I feel like you might even have a better mastery over some of the concepts that you've been struggling if you kind of take a day off 
and take a breather from the material. So if your exam is like five or six weeks away, just plan some days off that you can do anything else besides studying, whether that's calling friends or family members or hanging out or going on a hike, basically anything that has nothing to do with studying. I believe in a balanced lifestyle and studying for 12 hours a day is certainly the exact opposite of that. However, sometimes it's necessary if you wanna perform well on an exam or stand out amongst your peers. But at the end of the day, just remember to take time for yourself, call your family and friends, try to enjoy the process and keep the goal that you're working so hard towards always in the back of your mind. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave any comments below about any additional step one questions you may have or any medical school related questions. Stay strong and healthy, everyone. And as always, Dr. Bayo.